largest planet in the solar system, 13 times bigger than the Earth. So we can say that 30, 1300 Earths can fit into the Jupiter planet. And but the mass is only 388 times bigger than the Earth because of the low density of the Jupiter. Size-wise, it is 1300 times bigger, but the mass-wise, it is only 388 times more than the Earth because of the low density. And it has many satellites. It has 67 satellites and this planet has faint amount of rings around it. So these rings are easily these rings are easily seen in the sky during the night time because Jupiter is a very bright planet. So we can easily recognize the Jupiter planet. Next planet is Saturn. In Hindi it is also known as the Shani. So it is at a distance of 9.5 astronomical units from the sun. So you are observing that as the planet we are going one by one to the next planet, the distance astronomical unit is increasing, the distance from the sun is increasing. So it has a very low density, so much low density that this planet can float on the water. Such low density this planet has. And this planet also has many satellites, that is 62 number of satellites. And it is famous for the rings. Like Jupiter, this planet also has many rings. And these rings can be easily seen through the telescope. Next planet is Uranus. So Uranus, it is, Uranus is at a distance of about 19.2 astronomical units from the sun. And it rotates from east to west. Like Venus only, Uranus also rotates from east to west. There is a remarkable feature in the Uranus. This feature is that it has a highly tilted rotational axis. So highly tilted rotational axis. Due to this feature, Uranus appears to be rolling on its sides. Because it has a highly rotational axis or a tilted axis, because of this feature, it appears to be rolling on its sides. And this planet has 27 satellites. And the next planet is Neptune. Neptune, it is, Neptune is at a distance of about 30 astronomical units from the sun. It is the farthest planet from the sun. And this planet has about 14 satellites. Then these are, this is about the planets of the solar system. Now let's, some, let's see some other members of the solar system. The first member of the solar system is asteroids. Or we will also read about the asteroid belt. So what is an asteroid? Asteroid means the gaps between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. There is a gap between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. This green colored dots is the gap between the Mars and the Jupiter. So this gap is occupied by a large number of small objects. The gap between the Mars and the Jupiter is occupied by a large, large number of small, small objects revolving around the sun called asteroids. So the gap between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter is occupied by large number of small small objects. These small objects are also revolving around the sun. So this gap is filled by these objects known as asteroids. Okay? These objects, small small objects which are very large in number rotating around the sun that are revolving around the sun are known as the asteroids. So what is asteroid belt? It is present the orbits of Mars and the Jupiter, between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, there is asteroid belt and it extends about 2.3 to 3.3 astronomical units from the sun, that far it is from the sun, thus the asteroid belt and asteroids are made up of rocks, ice and minerals. So these small objects which are revolving around the sun are made up of rocks, ice and mineral content. And asteroids are the remnants of formations of the solar system. The remnants of formations of the solar system are asteroids. So now you have understood that in front of the asteroids there are four planets. Mars, Earth, Mercury and Venus. So Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These four planets are treated as inner planets or also known as the terrestrial planets. They are made mostly of the rocks. So that is the reason they are known as terrestrial planets. And those four planets which are like outside the asteroid belt, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These planets are known as the outer planets. They lie outside the asteroid belt. And they are also known as gaseous planets. Because there is more amount of gas, gas content on those planets, it is 
known as the gaseous planet or outer planets. These lie outside of the asteroid belt. So this is about the asteroids. So the next thing in the solar system is comets. Comets is a celestial body which revolves in an elliptical path around the sun. Elliptical path means oval path. All other objects revolve in a circular orbital path, right? But comets revolve in an elliptical path, in an oval shaped path. So comet is a celestial body which revolves around the sun in a highly elliptical path. And this has a long revolution period. The comet has a very long revolution period. And it appears as a bright object in the night sky. And it has a head. The head is very bright. And it also has a tail part. So when a comet comes near the surface of the earth, it is visible to us. And the examples of comets are Halley's Comets and Tempo. The Halley's Comet appears once in 76 years. So the last time it was appeared was in year 1986. So after 76 years, the next time it appears in 2062. So earlier days, in modern days, people used to regard these comets as indications of disasters like any epidemic disease may be coming or any cyclone may be coming or earthquake may be coming. They used to think like that. But it is not like that. All the comets occurring is always a natural phenomenon. And comets rotate around the sun in an oval path. And when they come nearer to the sun, the size increases. But the tail part is always away from the sun. So this is about the comet. So next object is meteor and meteorites. So these are observed as shooting stars during the night time. So in movies, in newspapers, in scientific magazines, we will be seeing about the shooting stars. So those are nothing but meteors. So what is a meteor actually? It is a small object from the space that reaches the Earth's atmosphere at high speed. Small small objects from the space reach the Earth's atmosphere at a very high speed. And friction due to the atmosphere, when it reaches the Earth, the friction due to the atmosphere heats it up. When the object gets heated up, it evaporates quickly. So that object is known as meteor. And what is a meteorite? Sometimes objects are too big to be completely destroyed by burning. So here we have understood that meteor evaporates by burning. But sometimes the objects are too big to be completely evaporated by burning process. Such objects reach the surface of the earth and are called meteorites. So they are remnants of the solar system. Scientists used to treat these objects as the remnants of the solar system. And these objects used to help the scientists to study the what to study about what material the solar system made up of. And when these meteorites used to reach the surface of the earth, they used to cause craters in the earth. Sometimes many human beings even used to die because of these falling meteors because they are very huge objects. So meteorite is an object which cannot be destroyed completely by burning and it reaches the surface of the earth and is called a meteorite. Meteorite causes damage to the human life, sometimes even death. And meteorites are the remnants of formations of solar system. These remnants help the scientists to study about the solar system, what material the solar system is made up of. So this is about the meteor and the meteorites. So next is the artificial satellite. So the man-made satellites are called artificial satellites. You know the natural satellites, right? Moon is the natural satellite of the Earth. Same way Jupiter, Saturn, all these planets have many satellites. Same way man-made satellites are known as the artificial satellites. And the purpose of these artificial satellites is remote sensing. Remote sensing means communication over a long distance. And telecommunication defense, telephone, how we talk, telephone with the help of satellites, right? Then how the voice is heard over from one person to the another in the phones with the help of satellites and weather predictions. Scientists can predict the weather based on the satellite information. Then communication satellites are there. These help in working of the mobile phones and working of the television and GPS system, global positioning system. So for the GPS tracking, mainly satellites are only helpful. So these are the purpose of the satellites. So in India, the first satellite launch was Aryabhatta. And after that, India has launched many artificial satellites like INSAT, EDUSAT, Kalpana 1. So these satellites are helping the human beings very much in day-to-day -day life over the communication, over the tracking systems, over the working of internet, everything. So this is about the artificial satellites and nearby we 
complete the chapter stars in the solar system.